Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. I'm Cheryl and this is True Crime and Other Stuff. Thanks for being here, where I like to bring you the facts about true crime, the missing, current events, or anything I find interesting or important. Today, we're going to talk about Robert Chambers, the preppy killer. He was arrested back in 1986 and found guilty for the manslaughter of Jennifer Levin. He spent 15 years in prison, got out, and then went right back to prison. All right, so this is also the very first video I ever made on YouTube. So we're gonna watch my video, have a little laugh, and <laughs> see if I got anything right. We're gonna watch another video about the preppy killer and we're going to watch one about him being let out of prison. All right, here we go. Welcome to my channel, True Crime and Other Stuff. <laughs> my name is Cheryl. <clears throat> Today I'm going to talk about the Preppy Killer. This was the first case that ever got me started <laughs> in true crime. I was 15 years old when this story came out. It was 1986 in August. Robert Chambers was 20 years old. He was 6'3", 190 pounds. He was handsome, went to elite schools, all the girls had a crush on him and Jennifer Levin was 18 years old young beautiful and she was a week away from going to college they were hanging out at Dorian's bar where all the rich kids hung out Jennifer left the bar with Robert at around 4 a.m. they were headed towards Central Park the next morning, a bicyclist found the body of a young woman, and she called the police. Robert was across the street, just staring. The police had told the onlookers to leave. They didn't realize Robert was a suspect until later, after questioning people at the bar. They said she left with Robert, so they got to question Robert, and they noticed he had scratch marks on his face. He said the scratch marks came from his cat. The cat had been declawed, so they knew he was lying. Then, when he was at the police station, he said he didn't mean to, that she had tied his hands behind his back with her underwear, and she was on top of him and was hurting him, and he got one of his arms free and hit her off of him. He said, I liked her very much. She was a friend of mine. The tabloids and the papers went wild. The victim blaming was through the roof. They went crazy saying things like, Inside the preppy suspect's mind, cops say he watched us find the body. <laughs> and girls slaying suspect says sex play got rough. Yeah, they drug Jennifer through the mud. Robert was dubbed the preppy killer. Jennifer's injuries were way worse than an accident. She had marks on her neck and one of her eyeballs had popped out. Her jacket was used to kill her and he stole her earrings and her cash. <laughs> Can you believe that? Her purse was strewn all over the place 
and it looked like a struggle had occurred. And he drug her a few feet and left her body under a tree, went across the street and watched them find her. Robert finally pled guilty to manslaughter, sentenced to 5 to 15 years. He served all 15 years due to bad behavior in prison. He got out of prison and he was out for about five years and then got put back in prison for selling drugs and assault. He got 19 years. He got more time for selling drugs than he did for killing Jennifer Levin. They did make a law after this case. It's a bill that was passed. The sexual past of a crime victim is no longer permissible in court. Robert Chambers is up for parole in 2023. He will be 57 years old. Wow. <laughs> My very first video. How embarrassing. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, he's been let out and he is 57 years old. And wow, that was my first video. <laughs> I'm kind of embarrassed. All right. Let's watch this video. It's a flashback. So that was a story that made me really get into true crime. I was 15 years old when this happened. So it was really close to me because they were only a few years older than me. And this is a, one of the stories that was just whew, really in the public eye. And people just went crazy talking about <laughs> her being sexual and this and that. And, it's, and they were all <laughs> rich kids and mm. they had good lives. And how could something like this happen? <laughs> yeah, it was a really crazy story. Well, thank you for listening. And if you like it, my content, please subscribe, like and share and comment thank you for your support wow Okay, that was crazy. Is that it? All right. Um, I think I have another video. The flashback video. All right, here we go. It was August 26, 1986. A young woman, Jennifer Levin, just weeks away from starting college, was found strangled in Central Park. See if her I got anything right. Torn from her body, bearing the marks of a violent struggle. I know I did. Just hours later, a tall, handsome friend, Robert Chambers, was arrested in what was later called the Preppy Murder Case. It is the hope of um, Jennifer's family. The Jennifer in death will wind up changing the world. Um, that if indeed she is defamed in this trial, that a great uproar will arise. Uh, enough. And she was. And that uh, 
Jen there will be justice for Jennifer and all Jennifers. There are many Jennifers, and they should all rest in peace. Jennifer was dragged through the mud by Robert Chambers' defense team. I was there in the courtroom covering this trial day after day. The courtroom was packed with both friends of the Levin and Chambers families. The prosecutor, Linda Fairstein, also submitted into evidence today the pictures of Jennifer Levin's nude body. Defense attorney Jack Littman began cross-examining Sergeant Wilson Zions this afternoon, but was cut short because of the snowy weather. It garnered international attention because of the rough sex defense. Yes, it the new did. tape and Chambers' confession claiming he accidentally killed Jennifer Levin because she was hurting him sexually has reignited the controversy over the rough sex defense. What is happening is they're trying to divert the attention of the jury to make the male the victim here, where in truth and in fact, it's the woman who's the victim. Fox obtained this exclusive video just days after Robert Chambers accepted a plea deal for five to 15 years in jail. The image portrayed him as a murderer. Cold hearted murder. He just doesn't give a damn. Robert Nicky was a juror in the Robert Chambers murder trial. He sat in chair number five. He and another juror, juror number eight, Cole Wallace, told me this new videotape only reconfirms what they thought about Chambers all along. Because I felt that he was guilty, and I feel, you know, with intent, you're allowed to use actions and things said before, during, and after. So it's one more thing that backs up the, the mental ability to have, intend to kill someone. Back on March 25th, Chambers pleaded guilty to manslaughter after the jury seemed to be heading toward a mistrial. The eight men and four women of the jury spent nine days deliberating without reaching a verdict. Since March 26th, Chambers has been serving time in an upstate prison. His attorney has refused to return any of our phone calls. Yesterday, Jennifer Levin's father said he hopes this new videotape haunts the jurors for the rest of their lives for not reaching a murder conviction. I maintain that, that he's a cool, calm liar. I, can't, I don't see anything else but a liar. Good liar. Stephen Levin today blasted State Supreme Court Justice Howard Bell for how he presided over the case. Levin called him a hopeless incompetent who should step down from the bench before another family is hurt. Mrs. Levin, understanding the, the pain of the, the family and understanding that another trial would be equally as burdensome as this one, does this satisfy you in any way? Yes, it does. I, I'm speaking for all of us when I say that uh, I don't think that we could have withstood another trial and the tensions and problems that went on for another year and a half. I don't think the guy's a murderer. I mean, I don't think he set out to kill anybody. I think it just happened. You know, it's just one of those things. I don't think he's a murderer. I don't think he went out to kill her. It's just unfortunate that it had to happen. It just happened. It's just one of those things that just happens. He's not a murderer. You know, they had a crush on him, that's for sure. I think he's guilty. I don't. I think he should walk. I thought he was guilty, and he should have got more time. He suffered enough. He suffered enough. Let him go. Let him go. Let him go. Why? Because I have a crush on him. This is serious. He should have gotten more than 5 to 15. Definitely. I think he should get life, or worse. I don't know about the plea bargaining stuff, but he had to go to prison. I mean, he killed the girl, so I mean, he killed her for 11. Do you think 5 to 15 years in prison is enough for killing someone? Um, honestly, no, but I mean, that's the justice system of today. Robert Chambers served the maximum sentence for the murder of Jennifer Levin, 15 years. He was released in 2003. Police arrested him again in 07 for running a cocaine and heroin operation. He was sent... Yeah, so actually he spent 30 years in prison altogether, which he should still be in prison in my opinion. But hey, that's just my opinion. In 1986, New York City logged more than 1,500 murders, but the media was fixed on the killing of one woman. August, 
18-year-old Jennifer Levin's partially nude body was found in Central Park. The prime suspect was 20-year-old Robert Chambers. His physical appearance and private school upbringing garnered him the nickname, The Preppy Killer. But it wasn't just the suspect's good looks that made this case so sensational. Claims of rough sex and a shocking video had the public on the edge of their seats. For InsideEdition.com, I'm Sal Bono, and this is New York Gritty. I had no idea how big the case was. When the case ended, a uh, law school classmate of mine called me from California, said, I've been watching you on TV. I said, what do you mean? He says, well, the Chambers case. I said, in California? My name is Roger Stavis, and back in 1986, the Robert Chambers' uh, case came into the firm about a week after I started. In fact, the case would be this former prosecutor's first foray into criminal defense and a complete departure from any assignment he had before. Uh, there was a new drug called crack. It is a crack epidemic, which police say is causing an increase in murder and other violent crime. Crime was rampant. Um, I think New York City last year had less than 300 homicides. In the Bronx, where I was an assistant district attorney, we used to have more than 300 homicides a year just in the Bronx. I had heard something on the radio uh, that morning about this case in Central Park. And uh, as soon as I got into the office, I found out that my office was going to be handling this case. The NYPD was quick to name a suspect. That's because they noticed a young man lurking around the crime scene with scratches on his face. Look at the reporting was. That part's not true. They didn't find him across the street. They told those people across the street to go home. They didn't find out about him until they went to the bar and questioned people and found out that she left with him. And I lost my spot. So. That we were using the blame the victim defense. Uh, it wasn't a blame the victim defense. It was a explain what happened defense. I'm a defense attorney. All I care about is defending my client within the bounds of law and ethics. And within the bounds of law and ethics, I would do it again in a case if I had to do it. The News Magazine show, A Current Affair, also got hold of video taken of Chambers while he was out on bail. Despite a murder charge hanging over his head, he appeared to be living it up and making what seemed like a tasteless joke with a doll. My name is... Oops. I think I killed him. It had nothing to do with her death. It was him being acting silly with a bunch of girls, and I thought that they tried to make it as though it had something to do with her death. But shortly after the video surfaced, Facing a deadlock jury, Chambers decided to change his plea and accept a sentence of 5 to 15 years in prison for manslaughter. For two years I have not been able to say I'm sorry. I've not been able to say anything. But now I've, I wish to have my feelings known. Just like that, the preppy killer was off to prison and the media circus was over. A case like that is, uh, is not just a case. It's a, uh, it, it takes over your life. You work uh, seven days a week, you uh, work every night, um, and then, interestingly, uh, someday, with all of these cases, and I've had several over the years, they stop. But moving on wasn't as easy for others. This is not something that ever goes away. People say time heals, that's baloney. Time doesn't heal anything. Ten years after Jennifer Levin's death, her mother spoke with Inside Edition about losing her daughter. He said he, he, threw her off him because she was hurting him, that she was raping him. And, and, and uh, you know, all of this other stuff that makes absolutely no sense to anyone. But we made a bargain to get Robert Chambers off the street and into jail. And um, that's not what we had hoped for, but I really feel we had no choice. Robert, what's it like to be out? Robert Chambers spent the full 15 years behind bars for Levin's death and was released in 2003. Five years later, he was back in trouble with the law, arrested for selling drugs out of his apartment. He was sentenced to another 19 years in prison. It's just pathetic. Um, after all that, 
you know, you, you, you wasted your, you just wasted your life. Roger Stavis is still a criminal defense attorney in New York City. He hasn't spoken to Robert Chambers in years, but says this case not only defined his career, but the era in New York. It's just part of the zeitgeist, uh, if you will, of the 1980s. I think that that's part, part of the interest. What, we, what were the 80s like? You know, uh, Giants win the Super Bowl, the Mets, Koch, Donald Trump. I can imagine the questions I'm gonna get today. I uh, wonder whatever happened to him, but if you put it all together, those are, those are quintessential New York in the mid-1980s. A lot of people remember the case and remember that this also could happen to your daughter. This also could happen to your son. All right. Well, it could. <laughs> and I have one more clip of a short video of him getting out of prison. So we're going to watch this that gripped our area and nation several decades ago. Robert Chambers, known as the preppy killer, is once again a free man. He's been released from prison after serving time in a separate drug and assault case. Chambers first gained notoriety for the Central Park murder of Jennifer Levin during the summer of 1986. He did 15 years behind bars for that crime. will be on parole now until 2028. All right, so thanks for watching my videos and have a beautiful day. Thanks for coming and thanks for watching my videos. I have 949 subscribers. I'm so happy. I have a thousand watch hours. I need a couple thousand more. So if I could get you all to watch some of my videos, I'd really appreciate that. Thank you for watching and come back next time. Bye.